So number one, I left the fill in the blank so you guys could just plug it in. Emphasis on the word quotient, that means divide. So the quotient of this and this. So we need to just plug in in words what this means and what that means. So we have uh, the quotient of three times x to the fifth. Sorry, ran out of space. Three times x to the fifth and four. And that's it for number one. Moving on to number two, write an algebraic expression. You don't even have to solve it. It just says write an algebraic expression. Now this is an equation because it has the word is, which means equals. So let's start uh, writing this down. Two less than, what does less than mean? Subtract. So this means subtract, but the word than implies a switch. So the two that came first is not gonna be first, it's gonna be second. And over here, the one fourth of a number that's second is not gonna be second, it's gonna be first. So I really have one fourth of a number minus two. Let me write the minus in red. Because after all, the less than implies minus, but the than implies a switch. Let me emphasize that. You have a two right here and a one fourth of a number over here. So the two gets switched second and the one fourth of a number goes first because of the word then. Once again, if you think, what is one year, one year less than your age, you're gonna do your age minus one, not one minus your age. Moving on to number three. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We still need to finish this. It says is 14. So this is 14, you're gonna put equals 14 and you are done, equals 14. This is your equation. Of course, you could solve it by adding two to both sides and multiplying by four on both sides, um, but that's not necessary. They only told you to write it down. You don't have to solve it. Now, on the midterm, it might tell you to write it and solve it, so it depends. Read your instructions carefully. Let's take a look at number three. It says solve, so we do have an equation. If you want to get rid of the fraction, you want to multiply by seven because it's really five divided by seven. If you want to get rid of something, you do the opposite, and the opposite of dividing by seven is multiplying by seven. Now notice that I put that seven up on top. That way it'll cancel because seven over seven equals one. So I really have five X, but then again, I forgot to multiply the other side by seven. So what you do to one side, since we multiply by seven here, you have to multiply by seven over here. And you could use, a, that is 175. You could use a calculator on the midterm. Final step would be to get rid of the multiplication of five, so you're gonna divide by five. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Five divided by five is one. X equals 35. Again, let the calculator do the work for you. And now, we could move on to the next slide, I believe. Moving on to number four. Number four says, write the verbal expression four. So, let's just take a piece at a time here um, this is really five times a, and then over here we have plus, and on this next part, I'm going to use the word sum to get these guys in parentheses. I want to say plus the sum of a and three. Again, plus the sum of a and three, because when I use the word sum, it implies it's in parentheses. So plus the sum of a and three. So I could also, let me put these parentheses in blue. That way you could see the word sum right there that represents those parentheses on what's happening in there. Okay, so we have five times A plus the sum of A and three. Five times A plus the sum of A and three is 123. So let's just write that down. And that's it, we're done. And of course, on the multiple choice test, it should be even easier because your answers are written and you just gotta eliminate the ones that don't work. Like, for example, if it said 5 divided by A, obviously it's not on there. You would eliminate that possible answer. Let's move on. Number 5 and number 6 is all about simplifying. Now, what does simplify mean? Distributed property and combining like terms. Okay? So, there is distributed property. Let's distribute this positive 10. Positive 10 times 2, that's positive 20. 
positive 10 times negative 7x, that's negative 70x. And then let's bring down the 4x that's out in the front. So again, simplify means distributive property and combining like terms. I already distributed, so now we gotta look for combining like terms. So we have three terms. We have the 4x, we have the 20, and the negative 70x. Out of those three terms, I could combine the x's with the x's. Now notice that this is not an equation. I'm not adding 70x to get rid of the minus 70x. It's not an equation. I'm just adding this. I'm combining these like terms in my head. So I, I have $4. I owe somebody $70. How do I end up? Still owe them 66 of those dollars, in this case, x's. And what about the plus 20? Let's just bring it down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our simplified algebraic expression for number five. Let's move on to number six. Number six, you have the option of distributing, because after all, simplify means distributed property and combining like terms. But notice that we have parentheses here. So let's zoom in and combine what we could combine on the inside. 11b and 5b. So this positive 11b and this minus 5b, when I combine those in my head, it's 6b, positive 6b. So I have a plus 6b. Now let me bring down um, the parentheses. Let me bring down the 12a right in front of it. And let me zoom out to get the whole picture here. So I have a 4 right in front. So I really have 4 times 12a plus 6b. And now let's actually distribute. So we're going to take this 4. Whoops. 4 times 12a is 48a. And then 4 times 6b is positive 24b. And that is your final answer. Moving on to number 7. 7 is probably the easiest question on the whole midterm. But some people still get confused. We're simplifying. All we're doing is combining like terms. So 14a squared plus 8a squared, you could actually do that. The answer is 22a squared. That's it. OK, guys, so uh, you guys just asked a good question. When do I add exponents or something like that? See, exponents are really multiplication, so the only time exponents change is if you were multiplying. Like a times a, yeah, that becomes a squared. a squared times a squared, yeah, that becomes a to the fourth. But right here, you're just combining like terms. It's like saying, I have 14 apples, and I have eight more apples. You're going to have 22 of those apples, right? Or $14 plus $8 is $22. You have 14 of these guys plus eight more of these guys, they're going to give you 22 total of these guys, right? Now, on the multiple choice, I'm sure they're going to try to trick you. They're probably going to give you, like, uh, maybe this option A. And maybe option B will be 22A to the fourth, just to see if you know what you're doing. So that's not going to be it, right? Um, so make sure that exponents do not change. You're just combining like terms. 14A squares plus 8A squares is a total of 22A squares. Okay, so 8a and 8b, it says name the sets of numbers to which each number belongs. Now, we have two numbers here. Um, what do I mean by sets? I'm talking about uh, classification of numbers. I hope you guys remember that, classifying numbers. The, yeah, the very first lesson of the entire year. Um, so when we first started learning about numbers, you learn how to count 1, 2, 3. Those are called natural. After that, there's whole numbers, which are the same numbers. One, two, three keeps going, but you also include zero, the number with the biggest hole in it. And then we have uh, integers. And integers are still zero, one, two, three, but we also have negative numbers. So we also have negative one, negative two, negative three, dot, 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 this way also. So those are integers. And then uh, we... What's after integers? What's on top of integers? Rational. That's right. So we have rational. And remember, ratio is inside the word rational. And we're talking about 
fractions. See the difference between integers and rational. Integers are 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Those are all nice numbers. There are no decimals or no fractions. If you ever do have a decimal like negative 1 half or like 0.75, those are now rational numbers. Now, they still make sense. Rational numbers still make sense. Like, you know what negative half means. You know what 75 cents means. But then you have these other numbers over here. Irrational, that's right. Now, irrational numbers are crazy decimals that continue, whoa, 3.14, that continue forever like pi. Or like the square root of any non-perfect square number, like the square root of 7, or the square root of 13, or the square root of uh, 17. Any of those numbers on a calculator, like if I do the square root of uh, 13 on a calculator, I want to get 3.600 or 0555127 and there is no pattern, it doesn't repeat. Those are crazy decimals, those are irrational. Now, I didn't emphasize this, that all of these numbers, including irrational numbers, all of those are called real. All of those are called real numbers, okay? Um, what do I mean by that? Later on in the class, we're gonna learn about imaginary numbers that are not real, okay? So pi is real. The square root of 13 is real, even though it's an ugly decimal. Later on, we're going to worry, uh, learn about imaginary numbers. That's when you take the square root of a negative number, like the square root of negative 9. That would be imaginary. But all of these are real. So when we go back to this type of question, whoops. When we go back to this type of question, um, what is pi? Well, one thing for sure is pi is real. It's a real number. Now, what kind of real number is it? It's disgusting. It's irrational. Yeah, don't write down disgusting. It's irrational. It's a crazy decimal that continues without pattern or without repetition. Now, let's look at this one right here. The square root of, or the negative square root of 9, that really is negative 3. Let me write it down here. The, neg the, the negative, bless you, negative comes down and the square root of 9 is 3. So the answer is negative 3. So we're really classifying the number negative 3. Now, it's definitely real. It's definitely rational. It's definitely an integer. Is it whole? No. It's not. It's not whole. And it's not natural, obviously. So all you're looking for is these three listed on your multiple choice options. Okay, so this next one, it's all about understanding the notation, guys. I've explained it on other videos. I've explained it in class. Hopefully, we get it by Friday. Um, G of X is just the name of this going on over here, the X squared minus 4X plus 7. It's just notation. So this is just notation G of 0. Now, this does not mean to multiply G times 0. What does it really tell you to do? This notation is telling you to take the x that was right there and replace it with what? The number 0. So what you're going to do is go to your x's and replace them with what? With the number 0. You're going to put zeros right here. So let's do that. I recommend you use parentheses when you plug in. So we're going to plug in the value of 0 right in there. So 0 squared is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Whether it's negative or not, it's still 0. So you really have 0 plus 7. So what's your answer to g of 0? 7. No, 7 is your answer. That's it. So if we understand that, that g of 0 is just the notation that tells us to take the x and replace it with 0. So you're going to take the 0, put it there, and put it there. What does g of negative 3 mean? Change the x to negative 3. So take that negative 3, put it right there. Take that negative 3, put it right there and work it out. Again, use parentheses. Let me move this a little over this way. So there's my x squared minus 4x plus 7, but with parentheses instead of x. So let's plug in the value of negative 3. So you plug in a negative 3, plug in a negative 3, you're replacing your x's with negative 3, and then you're going to use PEMDAS to simplify it. So let me zoom in right here and use PEMDAS to simplify that. Uh, yeah, we start with parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside the parentheses. You move on to e exponents. So negative 3 squared, that's positive 9. 
Now I might as well call this a negative four times a negative three. Actually, let me rewrite it. That way we don't uh, get confused. Let me do one step at a time. So rewriting everything, we end up with that. Nine minus four times negative three plus seven. So what do we do next? Subtract, multiply, or add? Multiply. multiply. And I want to call this a negative four. That minus four, I want to call it a negative four. So I want to go negative four times negative three. That gives me a positive 12. And I put a plus in front of it. And let me bring down again everything. And now it's simple addition from left to right. So 9 plus 12 is 21 plus 7 is 28. Correct? Yeah. And that's our answer. So G of negative 3 really is 28.